audience uh, wants answer on this very, very, very short trip. Um, so we'll move back uh, in 2020 for a longer time. So we'll have more time with her. Let me introduce uh, the people at the head table. Uh, closest to me is our host, the Minister of Culture, Gender, <coughs> Entertainment and Sport, who is leading the homecoming uh, celebrations. Uh, beside the Minister is our star, the lady of the moment, Miss World 2019, Miss Jamaica, Tony Singh from St. Thomas. <laughs> And beside uh, Miss World is uh, a sort of Miss World in her own right. Julia Morley has been so associated with this pageant. It is her, uh, particularly uh, the move to get beauty with a purpose. That's her legacy for Miss World, and that's her legacy for the world, actually. So a big uh, round of applause, please, for uh, Julia Morley. And then beside Julia Morley is the lady who gave us uh, Miss World, Mommy, Miss World Mommy, <laughs> Doreen Bailey. Uh, round of applause for Mommy, please. And we have the proud dad <laughs> with us here this morning. Who also gave us Miss World? Not many people can say that, you know. <laughs> So, welcome, Mr. Bradshaw C. So, it's going to be a very short uh, presentation uh, this morning. We're going to run through it quickly, and most of the time we'll be devoted to you asking your questions. Uh, we may not have that thing that you're used to, the sidebar, so you're going to have to ask all your questions in open because immediately following this news conference, Ms. World has uh, some engagements and we're already running behind schedule. So, unfortunately, you won't be having your sidebars uh, this morning. Okay, so let's begin uh, by inviting uh, the Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport to uh, do the welcome and to outline some of the activities that we have uh, for this week, uh, this weekend to welcome and celebrate our Miss World, our new Miss World, Tony Ensign. Thank you, thank you, Oliver. This morning belongs to the media, and so my remarks will be very brief. I just want to acknowledge the presence of Miss World, Tony Ensign, Mrs. Julia Morley, the CEO of the Miss World Organization, Mommy Jereen, and Daddy Bradshaw. And just to say that we're very happy that Miss Jamaica World is now Miss World. So she's not just for us now, she belongs to the world. And in fact, ladies and gentlemen, we can't, and I'm going to use a Jamaican term, we can't haul and pull her as we like anymore because she's under new management. <laughs> Steve, who is um, part of the team, the Miss World team, and David. David is uh, head of communications, and Steve is the head of events. And I also want to welcome them. They are the behind the scenes people. And I want you also to give them a big round of applause. So, I just want to briefly indicate that Miss World has a very active schedule. After the press conference, there will be a couple of other specially arranged interviews. She will then be hosted by the Minister of Tourism, Honorable Edmund Bartlett, at a small lunch. And this evening, she will be honored at a cultural tribute concert at Emancipation Park, right across from the hotel. 
where we would have some of our well-established international renowned artists performing. And she will also be presented with the key to the city of Kingston by His Worship the Mayor of Kingston, Senator Council, Delroy Williams. After that function, she will journey to St. Thomas and will make a brief stop at Unruly Fest. <laughs> We had to give her that little treat because the host of our Holy Fest, Popcorn, is from Bath, and so is Tony Ann. And also, the mayor of Marad Bay will use the opportunity to present a citation on behalf of the people of St. Thomas. Tomorrow, Tony and I will journey again to St. Thomas for a short tour, which will begin at Yalla Square. Then from Yalla Square, she will stop, she will make a stop at the Women's Center of Jamaica Foundation, St. Thomas Center. This is her special project where she has adopted that particular center which assists teenage margin mothers and pregnant teenage girls and girls who have either been sexually abused and got pregnant or girls who have experimented and have gotten pregnant. And her, she has taken that on in a very personal way. And I really want to applaud her for that. So she will make a brief stop there, and then she will continue to Arcadia, where she will uh, make a floral tribute to her late grandfather and grandmother, where she will um, lay flower, flowers on their tomb. After that, she will head to Bath, which is the major celebration and then head back to Kingston to be the guest of the Prime Minister at Jamaica House at the reception on the lawns of Jamaica House. We're happy to have Tony Ann here in Jamaica um, after winning the Miss World. I want to thank Mrs. Morley for agreeing to have her come to Jamaica just before Christmas. It's her Christmas gift because uh, they have plans for her and it's really tight getting her there and back out. But we're happy that we were able to share her as Miss World before the rest of the world shared her. Thank you ladies and gentlemen, I think I've said enough. It's for the media this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you. Many people don't realize now what Jamaica is all about. We need to promote that more. And when I travel around the world, I know Jamaica is a gem. And at the moment, it's almost undiscovered. It needs its tourism. It needs to be put up front all the good things Jamaica does. And this is the most beautiful person to do it. And we'll do our best to promote Jamaica wherever we go. Just a few words, because I know you don't want to listen to me too much, but I want to tell you, some people are still under some strange concept. I heard someone ask this word last night. Is it, you know, what it, how different are you from other contests? Well, we are different. And since 1971, when I was in Singapore, and there was, uh, as you know then, the, the roads were not made up, there'd been war, and it was in a bit of a state. Um, I was in a hotel, I was working on a project, and I looked down and I saw an old lady, she was on the street, and there were lots of handicapped people on the streets. And you know, she went over to them, she was carrying two bags, she was old, and she was a bit, it was a bit difficult for her to walk, but she went over, 
She went to the first person. It looked like a young person from the height of the hotel. I couldn't see so clearly, but she took from one bag. It looked like a flannel. She washed the face and the hands of the child and gave with the other bag of food. And I watched her for three days, and I rushed down to get down to her, and I asked her, why do you do this? It was a silly question, but it was meant to be well-meaning. And I asked her, why do you do this? And she said, is it not better to light one candle in the darkness than not to see at all? That started, she turned to me and said, that is my purpose in life. And I thought, where has Miss Well got? 1971. Are we just looking at beautiful women? Are we young, encouraging young people just to look beautiful? Where is the heart? Where is the mind? And so Miss World changed to Beauty with a Purpose. That was in 71. And it grew very, very slowly until now there's 130 countries all working in projects in their own country. What we try to do in a small way, in bigger ways, they all start in a small way is to get the license holders as well involved in being useful with the young people that are going forward in their local contests. This is being now, if you look on our website and see beautywithapurpose.com, you'll see all the projects around the world. 